Well, hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today to do the final unboxing video. So if you have missed the first two and a half, my father moved and he had been storing some books for me for the last 11 years. I moved to New York City in 2009 and left a bunch of books in his house at that point. I have not had them since then. So I, there, was, there were three boxes and one smaller box. And I did the smaller box in my December book haul video. I will link all of the previous videos down below. We have one box left. Let's get to it. As with the other videos, I have cut this box open, but I have not looked inside. So I'm going to try to react to these items as we go through. So let's get started and see what item number one is. Ah, it's a copy of Alice in Wonderland. I never actually well i read this in third grade um and i remember funny story about that i hated my third grade teacher because she was really mean to me but uh and she liked to treat me like an idiot in front in front of the class so she couldn't read the copy of alice in wonderland that she had for the class because it was typed in cursive and she couldn't read it so i volunteered and she let me do it and I, I could actually read it so i got to read alice in wonderland out loud to my third grade class and i haven't read reread it since so i wanted to have a copy of it this seemed like a fun one uh i liked this style of art that's there on the cover so there you go that's alice in wonderland let's see what's next the wonderful wizard of oz the 100th anniversary edition I did actually read this book, and I remember being very surprised that uh, in the book, <laughs> Dorothy and her friends rack up a body count on their way to Emerald City. It is interesting, <laughs> especially if, you're, if you've ever watched the movie. I have not read any of the other Oz books by L. Frank Baum, but I did read this one when it came out. This is a very pretty edition. It has that kind of old... I think this is original artwork for it. You can see the flying monkeys there on the back. If I can get it without glare, there you go. Um, and it has the gilt edges, which is nice. Poppies right there in the beginning. Ah, <laughs> Dorothy's a little bit jaundiced here, but hey, <laughs> no judgments. Yeah, it's, it's a very pretty edition of the book. So yeah, that's a nice thing to have back. Let's see, what's next? Oh, Little House on the Prairie. So I had Little House in the Big Woods in another box. I didn't think I had any other Laura Ingalls Wilder books, but I guess I do have Little House on the Prairie. I can't, I think this is the second book in this series. I don't think I have any others. <laughs> Otherwise, this is going to be a really boring video because it will probably be just a box of Little House books. But uh, I don't remember having any others. Let's see. Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs by Chuck Klosterman. I remember really liking this book. It's a series of essays on pop culture. Uh, so he talks about Saved by the Bell. I remember that one. Uh, Billy Joel, the symbolic importance of The Empire Strikes Back. So I was a huge fan of this book when it was published. I've read subsequent books that were released by Chuck Klosterman and the bloom kind of went off the rose. Um, but I think, if I remember right, this one was very funny and uh, kind of just something I used to recommend to people when I worked at Borders. Next book is Purple America by Rick Moody, author of The Ice Storm. This is something that the general manager at the Borders I worked at in Livingston recommended to me. So I bought it, it sounded interesting, and I never actually read it. Uh, I have a copy of The Ice Storm here on my bookshelves and have not read that one either. So this is probably a good excuse to finally getting around <laughs> to reading Rick Moody. So there you go. Uh, next we have Mary, the Webster's Dictionary of Word Origins. Uh, fun thing to have, handy little desk reference. Let's put that back there. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas by Hunter S. Thompson. This is a movie tie-in edition, which I usually don't like, but I guess I just grabbed it at the time. So when I was in high school, I had a history teacher in my sophomore and junior year of high school who was a huge Hunter S. Thompson fan, and he used to, when he was bored, just read us excerpts of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. So part of me feels like I have read it, but I have not actually read it. Certainly not cover to cover, like front to back. So it is something... I would like to do at some point. 
Hunter S. Thompson, like his persona has never quite been a fit for me. But still, he's a fantastic writer. There's no denying that. So it is something I'd be interested in reading at some point. Let's see what we have next. Hemingway, For Whom the Bell Tolls. Uh, this is good because I think the only Hemingway book I have here is A Movable Feast and um, the C one. God, the one he won a Pulitzer for. I'm having a total meltdown on the title. Uh, the Old Man in the Sea. So <laughs> that shouldn't have been that hard. So this will be a good one to have. I have only actually read short stories by Ernest Hemingway, and I've always meant to read one of his novels or A Movable Feast, which I believe is nonfiction. So this is certainly good to have. Next is Armistead Maupin's More Tales of the City, which is good because I, I have Tales of the City here. I don't have any of the others. I really need to get around to reading him. I'm kind of shocked and disappointed that I have not read any of these books yet. I have seen the miniseries of Tales of the City, More Tales of the City, and Further Tales of the City, but I'm sure they diverge from the books in some ways. So, yeah. I love that adorable little author photo. <laughs> and next we have The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. Now, funny story. I've told this to a couple of people one-on-one -on -one here. I was working at Borders in Livingston, and this did not happen to me, but I kind of walked in for the... I think it had just happened when I walked out of, uh, from the, bre the break room on my lunch break. So a customer came in asking for a copy of a book. We could not find it, could not figure... He didn't know how to, sp how to spell the name, so he called a friend and got the title of the book. Well, he was asking for a book called Namasake, and it turned out when the friend he called his friend and they were able to spell the title of the book, he was looking for the namesake. So we all had a really good laugh about that, and now it's been over 10 years, and I'm still laughing about it and telling the story. I remember really liking this book when it was published. Uh, I read it the moment it was published, because I had already read um, Interpretive Maladies and was a big fan of that. So nice to have this back on my shelf. Next we have... Unaccustomed Earth by Jhumpa Lahiri, another book I purchased the moment it came out because I was a fan of Interpreter of Maladies and The Namesake. This one, I was a little more mixed on than The Namesake and Interpreter of Maladies. So it's ostensibly stories, but some of them, if I remember right, at least one of them is actually sort of like a novella. So let's, let's take a quick look at the table of contents. All right, so there's part one, which is some stories, and then, okay, part two is interlinked stories about uh, about a couple. I remember being mixed on it. There were parts of it that I loved and parts that I was just kind of meh about. So, let's see. What is next? I can't get a grip on anything. Here we go. Mailman by J. Robert Lennon. I would be fascinated if anybody out there has read this book, has heard of this book, uh, and has feedback about it because I bought this book. When was this published? I believe I was working at the first Borders I worked at in the, in the one in the mall. And it was recommended to me by a fellow, a coworker. And I never got around to reading copyright 2003. So I would have been working at the one in the mall. It was very strongly recommended to me by somebody at that point, And I bought it. And you know how sometimes you get like a, 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 is this just me? You get a kind of stubborn thing like, I'm going to read that book someday. I don't care. <laughs> and then you never read it. And somehow almost 20 years passes and you still have a copy of the book and you haven't read it. Well, admittedly, I haven't had the book in my possession for 11 of those years. But um, yeah, so this is that book for me or one of those books for me. Another one was The Other by Thomas Tryon. I bought that book at a library sale when I was in, I think, sixth grade and had it for years and kept telling myself, I'm gonna read this someday, I'm gonna read this someday. And then I seem to have misplaced it because I don't have a copy of it anymore. And that is Mailman for me. And nobody knows about this book. Uh, I think J. Robert Lennon has published another book since this one, but I can't remember what it was called. So I'm curious, BookTube, if you have read this, let me know. Because the other thing that's gonna happen is after I, after I finish this video, I'm gonna have to start going through all of my books and doing a really brutal evaluation of whether or not I'm going to read things and whether or not I want to read things. So I need to come to a decision on this book. Should I keep holding on to it, thinking that someday I'm going to read it? It is 500 pages, so I need to know if this is going to continue to hang out in my possession. 
All right, next we have Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I was a huge fan of these uh, modern library editions of books back in the day. I used to have tons of them. Oh, this has a sticker from the Borders in the Short Hills Mall that I used to work at. Memories. So I bought a bunch of them hoping that, I, I, at that point, I, I've mentioned in a couple of these videos that when I was about 20, 21, I was working at Borders, didn't have much responsible things to spend my money on. I was still living with my father at the time. So I spent them on books and I wanted to have a really well-rounded library. So I figured even if I never get around to reading Moby Dick, I should have a copy of it in my library. And now I have it back. It is something I would be interested in reading at some point. This actually has very pretty illustrations as I'm flipping through it. Even some just kind of smaller ones. So maybe someday. It is a good thing to have, just in case, I guess. Uh, let's see. Crash by J.G. Ballard. I, this is another one. I, I, tell me what you think, book two, because I'm not sure. I've had this book for a really long time, never got around to reading it. I've heard mixed things about J.G. Ballard. So is this something... I should hold on to. You let me know, and we'll see. All right, next book, let's see, is The Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker. So this is the novella that Hellraiser was based on, uh, hence the pinhead image on the cover. I think I have a copy of this here. Interesting. Uh, so this might not be something I have to hold on to. I'm almost positive I have a copy. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. So I do not have a copy of this specifically. I have a copy of The Books of Blood by Clive Barker, which I think actually includes this. This was taken out of that and published as a separate edition because of its ties to the movie. So there you go. I remember it being good. So there you go. Let's see what's next. Jennifer Government, a novel by Max Barry. I remember really liking this book. This is another thing uh, most people that I have spoken to have not heard of. So this is a sci-fi book imagining a future where you there are no longer last names. Your last name is the company that you work for. So Jennifer Government is somebody who works for the government. If I worked for Nike, my name would be Greg Nike, and so on. Basically, it is a world about corporations run amok. They control everything. Um... The idea of like loyalty programs, I remember factors in largely. So I would actually be really interested in reading this because parts of it feel like they were kind of prescient for the way things went over the years since it was published. But maybe there are parts of it that I'm not remembering or misremembering that did not hold up very well. So I would be curious. I remember it also being a funny book as well. So I can't get a grip on anything. Here we go. Get a grip, Greg. Ha! Ah! Farmer Boy by Laura Ingalls Wilder. So I guess I do have some other copies of some Laura Ingalls books. There you go. There's not too much left in this box, so I don't know how many more I have. Let's see. Ah, A Ticket for a Seam, Seam Stitch by Mark Harris. I had mentioned in the first unboxing that I was a big fan of the first book in this series, which was um, Bang the Drum Slowly. So... There are, I think, four books in total following the career of this baseball player, kind of like Rabbit Angstrom by John Updike, where just follows in Bang the Drum Slowly. He's a rookie, and over the course of his career, I don't remember where this one falls in the progression of the books. I had it in my head that I wanted to read all of them, so I had all of them, and the only one I've ever read was Bang the Drum Slowly, so I don't know. <laughs> we shall see if I get to that. All right. There's a big clump of books and I can't grab one. Here we go. Something big is coming out. Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. This is perfect because this is on my Pulitzer Prize project. I have been meaning to read this book for ages and ages and ages. My sister read this when I was somewhere around junior high and she told me I should read it. And I remember I got offended by the first sentence because the first sentence of the book is Scarlett O'Hara was not beautiful. But men seldom realized it when caught by her charm at the Tarl as the Tarleton twins were. So I was offended because, of course, I'd seen the movie. And I was like, Scarlett O'Hara is beautiful. What is this talking about? And then, of course, if you read the rest of the paragraph, it talks about how she actually, she's very pretty, 
but it's the combination of being pretty and charm that lures people in, and it actually it kind of does make sense. So it's just kind of funny to think about knee-jerk reactions you have to things when you're young. So I was like, screw this book, <laughs> just because of that. Um, long book, over a thousand pages. It's a Pulitzer Prize winner, so it's part of my project. Glad to have a copy of it here now. And let's see what's next. Bang the Drum Slowly by Mark Harris. So this is the one that I have actually read. And uh, I don't know if you've seen, this was a, 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 a adapted for, I think, was it a TV movie? Um, I remember it just being a really good book, kind of sad, uh, a little bit funny in parts. It would be interesting to revisit this book at some point and see if it has held up for me. Next we have Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Oh, do I have a copy of this? I, I don't think so, but um, yeah. So I have toyed with the idea of reading this for about a long, long time and never got around to it. I've not seen the movie either. And I hear mixed things. I've heard people say it's overly complicated. I've heard people say it's a masterpiece and I don't know. Maybe I should just try it for myself at some point. And now that I have a copy, I have the option. Let's see, next is 1,000 White Women, The Journals of May Dodd by Jim Fergus. I am pretty sure I have a copy of this that I picked up from my library because my library sells used books. So doubles, haven't read it, um, but would be interested in, yeah, I'm almost positive I have a copy of this that I got from my library. So I'm gonna have to get rid of one of those. Uh, I've heard good things about it. Not too many people I know have read it. So if you have, let me know what you thought of it. Next we have It Looked Like Forever by Mark Harris. So there you go, officially, I believe it's four books in the series. So with the one that was in the other box, I officially have all four of them back. I'm gonna have to think about how likely I am to actually read this. Yeah, so this one is the final one. Uh, he's now 39, a faded veteran with a floating fastball, a finicky prostate, and other intimations of mortality. So it follows his career all the way to, I guess, the end. <laughs> we'll find out if I get to read it. Next is Cry the Beloved Country. Uh, so I mentioned I wanted to have c copies of classic books, and this was one of them. Never got around to reading it. So I believe Alan Patton is South African, right? Yes, Alan Patton was one of South Africa's greatest writers, so this would fit in with my reading goal for 2020. So maybe I'll finally get around to reading it. Knock 'em Stiff by Donald Ray Pollock. This is, um, is this short stories? I, oh, I have notes on it. This is why I love using index cards as bookmarks because it's like a little time capsule for what you thought of a book. And I believe this is short stories or is this the novel he did after? No, this is short stories. I remember them being good. They're kind of brutal and spare. Um, I think he's released another book since. There is a quote from Chuck Palahniuk on the cover. I am not a Chuck Palahniuk fan. I remember liking this book though. So there you go. Next we have, oh, <laughs> a funny story. I'm gonna hold this for a moment. Uh, it's the playbill for Greece, a high school production. Uh, so my younger sister's boyfriend played Danny Zuko in this. So yeah, there you go. We went, she dragged us all to see it because she wanted to see it, but because it was not her high school, she wanted to have family around her. I guess it's not such a funny story for you guys, but it's a fun memory for me. So there you go, the Boonton High School <laughs> playbill for Greece. Huh, okay. Ah, oh, Fugitive Pieces by Ann Michaels. Somebody told me about this book somewhere around the year 2001. Or 2002, because this has a sticker from the Borders. I used to work at in the mall, and the sticker is dated November 26, 2002. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, so anyway, somebody told me about this book somewhere around 2002, and I believe her book club had read it. She was somebody who lived in the town where I lived. She was a friend of my father's. And she told me it was amazing, one of the best books she had ever read. So I picked up a copy, um, actually it has a blurb from Mashiko Kakatani on the front, it's saying extraordinarily magical. If I remember right, it's a World War II novel and a boy survives hiding in the mud, something like that, which would kind of explain the cover where he seems to be covered in mud. So this actually would be an interesting book to get around to. We'll see. 
All right, next we have Oh, the Glory of It All by Sean Wilsey. I remember really enjoying this book and being a little bit surprised. It's a memoir. He has like a complicated family. It's got another blurb from Mashiko Kakatani, so there you go. Yeah, so Sean's blonde bombshell mother regularly entertains Black Panthers and movie stars in the family's marble and glass penthouse. His enigmatic father uses a jet helicopter to drop Sean off at the video arcade. It's so it's a memoir of his messed up wealthy family. It would be interesting to see if this actually holds up over time, um, especially given the ch changes in the economy since this book was published. And the fact that, you know, at the time I bought this, I was a pretty carefree 20, 21 year old and um, <laughs> a settled 37 year old now. So I'd kind of be curious to see, I know I recommended it to a bunch of people when I worked at Borders and they didn't take to it. So maybe it's, something that I thought was interesting. I don't know, and I've never heard anybody else talk about it. So there you go. Now let's see, we have This Boy's Life, a memoir by Tobias Wolf. So I got a copy of Old School by Tobias Wolf in the last box, which again, I will link the video of which down below. And I always meant to read more Tobias Wolf. So I bought this copy of his memoir and just never got around to reading it. I've never even seen it. This is, was adapted into a movie, wasn't it? I think with Leonardo DiCaprio, never seen it. So yeah, this is a good thing to have around. I would love to get to that at some point. Not too much left in this box. Next is The Garden of Lost Days by Andre. I never know how to say his last name. Is I don't know if it's Dubus, Dubus, <laughs> and something like that, the third. I remember liking this book. It has problems. There are er there are some kind of problematic areas, but I remember on the whole enjoying it. it it's one of those things where there are several different storylines that kind of converge. Uh, it's like a kind of, it's a post 9-11 novel, but if I remember right, it's set in the period leading up to 9-11. Um, I remember enjoying it. I don't remember a lot of details about it but um yeah so this would be kind of a curious one to re revisit next is the ladies of grace adieu and other stories by susanna clark i was actually a huge fan of jonathan strange and mr norrell even though i thought it dragged in parts i think the world building ability of susanna clark is staggering and jonathan strange and mr norrell had footnotes which i love i love a book with footnotes I should say I love a novel with footnotes. Uh, Nonfiction books that have footnotes are not particularly special. <laughs> and this is a collection of stories set in the world of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, but not directly related to them. I remember thinking this was a very charming book, enjoying it a lot. I love the cover. It, you can't feel it, but it's actually a fabric cover, so it has a nice texture to it as well. Uh, I believe Susanna Clarke has a book coming out that nobody knows a whole lot about, and I'd be interested in seeing what that is or what the deal is. All right, we have The Orchid Thief by Susan Orlean. I read this, you can see right there, the inspiration for the movie adaptation. So this was right around the time adaptation came out. I read this before I went to see the movie because I was curious about how it would go about adapting. And of course, total non sequitur or sidebar here. The movie adaptation is very much about how difficult it is to adapt The Orchid Thief for the screen. And I remember really liking this book. It's very much about obsession. It has a lot of really interesting details about flowers, specifically orchids, and the obsession that people have for them. I remember really, really enjoying this book. And coming to the end, Martin Dressler by Stephen Milhauser. I really loved the book Dangerous Laughter by Stephen Milhauser and had wanted to read another book by him, so I grabbed a copy of this. This is perfect for me to have because it is a winner of the Pulitzer Prize, which you can see right there. So very nice to have that back in my life. I think there are maybe two or three more. Ah, an advanced reader's copy of Dress Your Family in Corduroy and Denim by David Sedaris. I think I got an advanced copy of this because it showed up at Borders, which surprises me because he, this was, so this one was published in 2004, uh, but even by then, Me Talk Pretty One Day had been published and was a big success, so I'm kind of surprised. Uh, I am a little bit up and down with David Sedaris. I think when he's on, he's absolutely hilarious, but in every collection of his that I've read, and people are probably going to hate me for this, I get a little bit tired by the end. So I had told myself if I ever revisit, read another book of his or revisit one of his, I need to do it in installments. 
and not all at once. I don't know. I don't know if other people feel the same way. Most people I know just kind of love David Sedaris. So there you go. That's my hot take on him. Next is Amsterdam by Ian McEwan. So I read Atonement when it was first published because when it was first published, it had a, uh, what I remember, it was a rave review in the New York Times book review. Uh, I liked it. Wanted to read more of his, so I picked up Amsterdam. Never got around to reading it. This is a winner of the Booker Prize, I believe. And I've heard mixed things about it. Yeah, winner of the Booker Prize, right there. And I just, I've heard mixed things about it. And I have, I have since read another book by Ian McEwan. I read Saturday in a class when I was in college. And I don't remember much about it, but I remember not being too keen on it. So, and I had a copy of another one of his books uh, that I managed to get uh, an advanced copy of. And never got around to reading so i have to think i'll probably hold on to that one just so i can get to it at some point next the dictionary of word origins I, as you can see from the other one i uh, was really into word origins at one point in the past <laughs> all right this i think is going to be the last one yeah it seems like it'll be the last one it is Mike Nelson's movie, Mega Cheese. If you are unfamiliar, Mike Nelson was on the TV show, Mystery Science Theater 3000, which was on TV when I was a teenager, and I was a huge, huge, huge fan. I also low-key had a major crush on Mike Nelson. Uh, my sister would say this is an example of me having a thing for gingers, but I swear it's always just a coincidence. Anyway, so he wrote a book about movies, bad movies, and things like that. So of course I snapped it up immediately. And yeah, it's back. So this is nice to have. Uh, God, memories. <laughs> uh, and oh no, there is a, one more book here lurking at the bottom. A Mercy by Toni Morrison. I have not read this. Um, wow. Did I, I must have got... So this was published in 2008 and I have an advanced copy of it. I must have gotten this from Borders. Why would they be sending advanced copies of a Toni Morrison to book to a Borders? I don't know, but here it is. And I've never read it. And I'm working through all of her works. I'm uh, most of the way through Song of Solomon right now. So this is a really good thing to have. Yay. I'm very excited about that. Now that is the end for real. No more unboxings. So... I have a lot to think about here. So what I think I'm going to do, starting in February, I'm going to do a sort of, uh, I'm going to do an unhaul, and I think I'm going to invite you guys in. I'm going to see how it goes. I'll try to film it, and if it's really unwieldy or difficult to do, I'll think of a different way of doing it. But what I'm thinking of doing is trying to combine a sort of bookshelf tour with an unhaul and doing it over a couple of videos where I go through my shelves and what's on them and really evaluate whether or not I want to keep something and hold on to it. Um, and I need to be brutal about it because I really don't have space. So I may start by going through all of the books that were in the unboxing. I don't know. I haven't figured it out. I'm just kind of spitballing here. So that's probably what I'm going to do. So starting in February, <laughs> I, I did a lot of unboxings in January. In February, I need to do some unhauls. So I'm going to try to figure out a way to invite you guys into the process. Um, so if you have feedback on things like Crash by J.G. Ballard, Mailman by J. Robert Lennon, or any of these others, I got to know. Because <laughs> I need to start making decisions like now. Anyway, that's going to come. And we'll figure out how it's going to work. And until then... Thank you for your time following along with all of these. I'm really excited to have some of these. Like, I would actually like to read this at some point. Uh, so I'm really excited to have some of these back. Uh, and I really appreciate your time, as always. And I will be back until next time. Happy reading. <laughs>